actually get it now. So let's do our 45, 45, 90 degree triangle first, okay? Now I'm gonna draw a 45 degree triangle here. This has to be the same size, right? Wow, it's too big. Oh, it is 45, 45. Okay, so all I did was uh, to be as accurate as possible when I drew the, the line, I put little ticks. Where is it? I put a little tick here and a little tick here that measures the distance here and all I did was flip it and put it up right since I don't have my protractor they're all in a way in boxes somewhere right so right now what we got is a special triangle this is 45 degrees I mean this is 90 degrees this is 45 degrees which happens to be the same as pi over four radians, right? So I'm gonna put pi over four up here. Okay, so right now we got degrees mixed in with radians, which you really don't do, but we're doing it so we can take a look at the ratios and just remind ourselves what 45 degrees is. Okay, now for our special triangles in mathematics, what we've talked about is that I've mentioned a couple of times uh, that what we like to do is we like to simplify our calculations, right? That's the beauty of mathematics. Math allows us to take a look at any system and try to simplify it as best as we can, right? By combining, you know, merging variables or setting up values for variables or for, um, for, const, uh, for, for things that stay constant uh, to something simple that allows us to do the calculations as quickly as possible to for us to be able to scale things right for us to be able to um, to manipulate them as easily as possible right one of the things we did initially obviously was we took us we took a circle and to simplify our, our calculations we took a circle and we said we're going to create the ideal circle we're going to create the unit circle and what we're doing is we set the radius to be equal to one and that made a unit circle right because one is easily scalable right easy to work with so one of the ways we did this to simplify our calculations uh, to set something at a value that makes it easy for us to do our work we took a circle we set the radius as one and created a unit circle the second time we did this to you know we set things in our system to make our calculations easy we took we introduced the concept of radians right so instead of working with degrees what we did we took the radius of the circle superimposed it on the circumference of the circle and we said if we travel the same distance along the circle on the outer edge on the circumference of the circle the distance equivalent to the radius we call that one radian right so that's the second time we standardize something to make our calculations easy this is going to be the third time now for us to figure out what sine cosine and tangent are we're going to standardize our units our special triangle and the way triangles work and we talked about this um a fair bit uh, now if you recall from series one we did talk about triangles a little bit but um, just to recap the way triangles work is just imagine this being our triangle right not a writing on this one eh? just imagine this being our triangle right now in a triangle an angle 
control this opposite side, right? So this angle controls this side. This angle controls this side, and this angle controls this side, right? If you want to visualize this, just imagine this is our triangle. Now I'm going to decrease this side. If I'm going to decrease this side, which angle is getting smaller? It's this guy right here, right? So I'm going to decrease this angle, and this side gets changed. These sides don't change, right? So an angle controls the opposite side, right? If I make it bigger, this angle gets bigger. So for us to do our calculations, what we end up doing, we standardize our special triangles. And the way we standardize it to make our calculations easy, we take the smallest angle for this triangle, it happens to be 45 degrees, and across from the smallest angle, we set that side to be one unit, okay? So we're gonna set this thing to be one, right? It's just like generating the unit circle, right? We set the radius to be one. It's just like us setting up radian measures, right? One radian is equivalent of us traveling the same distance as the radius around the circle. Makes our calculations easy. This makes our calculations easy. Across from the smallest angle, we set that side equal to 1. Well, that's 45 degrees. That's 45 degrees. Pi over 4 radians is the same thing as 45. If this is 1, this has to be 1 as well. Right? And if we use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, what we end up having is this guy becomes square root of 2. The distance here becomes the square root of 2. Now, 1 could be anything you want. 1 meter, 1 meter. This is the square root of 2 meters. The square root of 2 is just a number, right? 1 point, dot, 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 whatever it is. Okay. So, to take a look at our trig ratios, to find out what our trig ratios are for this special triangle, we just go for sine theta. It's opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent. And that's what our trig ratios are, right? So sine theta, right? And theta happens to be 45 degrees, or pi over 4 radians. So sine of 45, I should put down 45 here, actually. So sine of 45 degrees, right? Sine of 45 degrees is uh, 1 over root 2. Now, 1 over the square root of 2, um, if you recall from series 2, we talked a lot about um, exponents and radicals, right? And radicals are something you've got to have a really good grasp on. But there's a rule where it says we can't have an irrational number in the denominator. So what we end up doing is multiplying this by root 2 over root 2, which happens to be 1, right? 1 appears again because um, you can multiply any number by one without changing its value, right? So what we end up doing is we multiply this by root two over root two, and that rationalizes the denominator. So this also appears as root two over two, okay? And this is 45. degrees right so that's sine of 45 degrees cos of 45 degrees I'm just gonna write this as cos of pi over 4 right because we're also working in radians so cos of pi over 4 is adjacent over hypotenuse so it happens to be 1 over root 2 or if you're doing it here 1 over root 2 so this is also 1 over square root of 2 which happens to be root 2 over 2 right root 2 over 2 okay now you're going to see both of these appearing depending on who your teacher is what books you're reading uh, you know it, it's they use both for me they're both equivalent i really it, it doesn't matter um for representation wise uh presenting the information the answer if you put 1 over root 2 or if you put root 2 over root, or root 2 over 2 
but if you're going to end up using these values um, you want to work with this root 2 over 2 because uh, it makes our calculations much easier okay so that's what cos of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 or 1 over root 2 tan of 45 degrees happens to be opposite over adjacent which is 1 over 1 okay so tan of 45 degrees is 1 over 1 which is just 1 okay that's what our trig ratios are for the special triangle for the special triangle and if you recall what these values represent for a unit circle anyway is our coordinate system right sine theta for a unit circle is y and cos theta is the x value so this coordinate here when we're standing here okay sine theta is our y coordinate so sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 right so our y part here becomes root 2 over 2 and our cos is root 2 over 2 as well and that happens to be our x root 2 over 2 so what this says is when you go up from here to 45 degrees your y value if we take this across your y value here is root 2 over 2 right that's how far you are up on the y-axis and your x value here is root 2 over 2 as well okay that's the distance that you've traveled along the circle uh, along the x-axis and that's the distance you've traveled up the y-axis right to get to this point 45 degrees on a unit circle pretty pretty uh, pretty interesting pretty cool actually um let's do the other special triangle 30 60 90 right and this one we're going to draw approximately so what we're going to do if we draw it here we'll do our calculations here cool so i'm just going to draw this guy first So let's assume this is an accurate 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Okay. So this is going to be 90 degrees. This is going to be 30 degrees. And this is going to be 60 degrees. Okay. And 30 degrees is pi over 6. And 60 degrees is pi over 3. And again, what we're going to do, we're going to standardize this special triangle, right? And the way we're going to do it, we're going to try to make it as easy as possible on our calculations, across from the smallest angle, because this angle controls this side, the opposite side, across from the smallest angle, we're going to set that length there to be 1. Okay. And what happens the distances here what they end up being is across from the 60 degrees ends up being the square root of 3 okay and across from the 90 degrees the hypotenuse ends up being 2 okay and again what we're going to do we're going to take a look at where trig ratios are for 30 degrees and 60 degrees so we're actually going to generate two of these right because we're going to have to want make one for 30 degrees sine cosine and tangent and we're going to have to make one for 60 degrees sine cosine and tangent so let's do these down here so sine of 30 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse so that's one over two okay 
cos of 30 degrees or cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Okay, hopefully this is all going to come out. Are we too far down? Well, we'll squeeze it in. So tan of 30 degrees is 1 over root 3. So tan of 30 degrees is 1 over root 3. So tan of 30 degrees is 1 over root 3. And again, this thing, we have an irrational number in the denominator, right? And we can't have an irrational number in the denominator. So we multiply 1 over root 3 by root 3 over root 3 because we can multiply anything by 1 without changing its value, right? So all we're doing is we're going to re represent this as another form. The value doesn't change. We're just going to make it look different, right? That's all we did here. We multiplied 1 over root 2 by root 2 over root 2. So we multiplied this thing by 1. So we didn't change this value. All we did, we changed this look, right? We made it look like something else. And this is the same thing. We're going to multiply 1 over root 3 by root 3 over root 3 uh, by root 3 over root 3. So this ends up being root 3 over 3. Okay. That's what tan of 30 degrees is, right? And what these values represent is, uh, if we go on the unit circle, if we go here, if we're standing at 30 degrees here, right? And remember, this is our reference angle. The angle in standard position would be 150 degrees, right? But what we're going to end up doing is working with reference angle a lot. This is that's one thing we really need to do to analyze our movement around the circle, right? So if we do 30 degrees, sine theta is our y coordinate, right? The y part of this. So if we draw our coordinate system here, our y here, if we come across, that ends up being sine of 30 is. 1 over 2. So that's how far up we are on the y-axis. So our y part is 1 over 2, right? And our x part, which is cos theta, is root 3 over 2. That's how, how far down the x-axis we are. So this is root 3 over 2, right? Root 3 over 2. But since we're on the negative x coordinate right negative part of the x-axis this is negative root 3 over 2 negative root 3 over 2 right and that's our coordinate if we're standing right here right based on our Cartesian coordinate system for a unit circle okay now let's take a look at what our sine cosine and tangent are for 60 degrees so sine of, let's move this up a little bit, these things, right? So sine of 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, so root 3 over 2. Okay. Cos of 60 degrees is 1 over 2. Cos of uh, pi over 3, let's say. Switch up between degrees and radians, so we're familiar with both. Pi, uh, cos of pi over 3 is going to be 1 over 2. Okay. And tan of 60 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is just root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. So tan of 60 degrees is root 3. Okay. And, you know, again, if we want to understand what these values mean, 
what sine theta and cos theta mean, what sine of 60 and cos of 60, cos of power over 3 mean. They're just the coordinate systems of where we are here, right? If we're standing here, our y value is root 3 over 2. That's how far up along the circle we are. So this is root 3 over 2. And our x value, if we bring it down here, is 1 over 2, but negative because we're in a negative x coordinate, right? So this is negative a half, negative a half. So sine and cos of an angle actually give us the coordinates of where we are on the circle. They give us, you know, we've talked about this we, when we're graphing the sine function and cos function and tan function, and we're going to do this again. We're going to graph those trig, these trig identities, sine, cosine, and tangent based on radians because we're going to work in radians a lot but what they are is our y coordinate and for sine anyway and our x coordinate right right and that's what these numbers represent they just values right so these are our two special triangles we have to know i'm going to refer to these a lot right now if you were paying attention, there's one thing that's happening here that you should have noticed, right? If this is our unit circle, that means the radius is one, right? Now, I didn't put down unit circle here because I didn't want to confuse matters, right? This radius would have been one, which means the hypotenuse would have been one. But if you noticed, our special triangles, the hypotenuse is not one, it's two, right? So what we're going to do right now, just to convince ourselves that these ratios don't change no matter how big the triangle, triangle gets or how small the triangle gets, the values don't change. What we're going to do is go back to something that um, a lot of people cover in my area anyway, in grade 8 or grade 9, where we're talking about similar triangles. So we generate similar triangles just to convince ourselves that these values don't change for sine and cos basically what we're saying is if you have similar triangles and similar triangles basically means if you have triangles that keep the same form but they're different sizes right one is a bigger version of another one right like a mini mini special triangle relative to a bigger special triangle right so what we're going to do is convince ourselves that the ratios of the sides don't change as long as the angles of the triangle are the same 